Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercies are everlasting, and his truth endureth for generation to generation. Oh, enter into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him, and bless his name, Miss Kathy and Dutch, and Joy, and your Linda. And now here comes Mel to desire the word. Miss Sharon has tuned in to us. Hello everybody, Yolinda says, with many musical notes, hallelujah, hallelujah, on this February 17, 17, wow, what is it, halfway, huh, halfway through the month already, goodness gracious. We will be in this new book that we have started, Leviticus. Leviticus, one of these mornings, Scott's going to come on and tell me what the Hebrew is. I would love that. I could look it up myself, couldn't I? Hmm. Leviticus, we are in chapter 4 this day, this February 17th, the brand new day God has given to you, just for you. And we're going to start out here in this chapter is mostly all about what happens if you commit an unintentional sin. We all know what intentional sins are, but how about if you unintentionally do it? And, and sometimes doing it, you don't even know you did. Okay, what does the Lord have to say about that? Well, let's take that on. Now, the Lord spoke to Moses, Moshe, saying, speak to the children of Israel, saying, if a person sins unintentionally against any of the commandments of the Lord in anything which ought not to be done, and does any of them, if the anointed priest sins, ooh, how about that, bringing guilt on the people, then let him offer to the Lord for his sin, which he has sinned, a young bull without blemish as a sin offering. He shall bring the bull to the door of the tabernacle of meeting before the Lord, lay his hand on the bull's head, and kill the bull before the Lord. And Miss Melissa is tuned in now, waving at us. Then the anointed priest shall take some of the bull's blood and bring it to the tabernacle of meeting. And we are in Leviticus 4, verse 6, Miss Melissa. Leviticus 4. The priest shall dip his finger in the blood and sprinkle some of the blood seven times before the Lord in front of the veil of the sanctuary. And the priest shall put some of the blood on the horns of the altar of sweet incense before the Lord, which is in the tabernacle of meeting. And he shall pour the remaining blood of the bull at the base of the altar of the burnt offering, which is at the door of the tabernacle of meeting. He shall take from it all the fat of the bull as the sin offering. The fat that covers the entrails and all the fat which is on the entrails, the two kidneys and the fat that is on them by the flanks, and the fatty lobe attached to the liver above the kidneys, he shall remove. 
as it was taken from the bull of the sacrifice of the peace offering. And the priest shall burn them on the altar of the burnt offering. But the bull's hide and all its flesh with its head and legs, its entrails and the offal, the whole bull he shall carry outside the camp to a clean place where the ashes are poured out and burn it on wood with fire. Where the ashes are poured out, it shall be burned. Now, if the whole congregation of Israel sins unintentionally, they didn't mean to, unintentionally, and the thing is hidden from the eyes of the assembly, and they have done something against any of the commandments of the Lord in anything which should not be done, and are guilty, when the sin which they have committed becomes known, then the assembly shall offer a young bull for the sin and bring it before the tabernacle of meeting. Good morning, Miss Connie. We are in Leviticus 4.15, sister. Leviticus 4.15. And the elders of the congregation shall lay their hands on the head of the bull before the Lord. Then the bull shall be killed before the Lord. Notice now this, this calls for a group effort of hands on the head of the bull. The anointed priest shall bring some of the bull's blood to the tabernacle of meeting. Then the priest shall dip his finger in the blood and sprinkle it seven times before the Lord in front of the veil. And he shall put some of the blood on the horns of the altar which is before the Lord, which is in the tabernacle of meeting, and he shall pour the remaining blood at the base of the altar of burnt offering, which is at the door of the tabernacle of meeting. He shall take all the fat from it and burn it on the altar. And he shall do with the bull as he did with the bull as a sin offering. Thus he shall do with it. So the priest shall make atonement for them, and it shall be forgiven them. Imagine that. They have to go through all of this to have forgiveness. Good morning, Miss Donna. We pray that you are feeling well, <clears throat> and we are waving back at you. Then he shall carry the bull outside the camp and burn it as he burned the first bull. It is a sin offering for the assembly, the whole assembly. Miss Donna, we are in Leviticus 4, verse 22. Leviticus 4, 22. When a ruler has sinned and done something unintentionally, unintentionally, against any of the commandments of the Lord his God in anything which should not be done and is guilty, or if his sin which he has committed comes to his knowledge, he shall bring as his offering a kid of the goats, a male without blemish, and he shall lay his hand on the head of the goat and kill it at the place where they kill the burnt offering before the Lord. It is a sin offering. Good morning, Miss Kim. Welcome to the reading of the Word of God. We are in Leviticus 4, 25. The priest shall take some of the blood of the sin offering with his finger, put it on the horns of the altar of burnt offering, and pour its blood at the base of the altar of burnt offering. Notice this time he doesn't take his finger and sprinkle it. And he shall burn all its fat on the altar, the fat of the sacrifice of the peace offering. So the priest 
shall make atonement for him, this ruler, concerning his sin, and it shall be forgiven him. If any one of the common people sins unintentionally by doing something against any of the commandments of the Lord in anything which ought not to be done and is guilty, or if his sin which he has committed comes to his knowledge, then he shall bring as his offering a kid of the goats, a female, a female without blemish, for his sin which he has committed, and he shall lay his hand on the head of the sin offering and kill the sin offering at the place of the burnt offering. Then the priest shall take some of its blood with his finger, put it on the horns of the altar of burnt offering, and pour all the remaining blood at the base of the altar. He shall remove all its fat, as fat is removed from the sacrifice of the peace offering. And the priest shall burn it on the altar for a sweet aroma to the Lord. And you know, for me, there is nothing that smells like blood. Blood has a distinctive odor of its own, doesn't it? And here, when the priest shall burn it on the altar for a sweet aroma to the Lord, you know, that's a totally different smell to be able to say a sweet aroma. So the priest shall make atonement for him, and it shall be forgiven him. He can turn around when they're finished and go back home feeling forgiven. He's publicly confessed and displayed his guilt. He's gone through the motions of killing this animal, knowing that the sin is transferred to that animal. And then to watch its blood and see the fat burn. You know, we can read this kind of like, man, it is way far from my life and time of this generation, and it is. But just think for a moment what it would have stirred, because it's only a transfer. We're wait they were waiting for Messiah to come at that time, okay? How fortunate are we to live under the blood of Jesus, where forgiveness is a completed work, finished. Whew. If he brings a lamb as his sin offering, he shall bring a female without blemish. Then he shall lay his hand on the head of the sin offering and kill it as a sin offering at the place where they kill the burnt offering. The priest shall take some of the blood of the sin offering with his finger, put it on the horns of the altar of burnt offering, and pour all the remaining blood at the base of the altar. He shall remove all its fat, as the fat of the lamb is removed from the sacrifice of the peace offering. Then the priest shall burn it on the altar according to the offerings made by fire to the Lord. So the priest shall make atonement for his sin that he has committed, and it shall be forgiven him. We move right along to chapter 5 of Leviticus 5. If a person sins, in hearing the utterance of an oath, he heard this oath and, he, and is a witness whether he has seen or known of the matter. If he does not tell it, he bears guilt. Now think that one over for a moment. Or if a person touches any 
unclean thing, whether it is the carcass of an unclean beast or the carcass of unclean livestock or the carcass of unclean creeping things, and he is unaware of it, he also shall be unclean and guilty. Or if he touches human uncleanness, whatever uncleanness with which a man may be defiled, and he is unaware of it, when he realizes it, then he shall be guilty. Or if a person swears, speaking thoughtlessly with his lips to do evil or to do good, whatever it is that a man may produce by an oath, and he is unaware of it, when he realizes it, then he shall be guilty in any of these matters. And it shall be when he is guilty in any of these matters that he shall confess that he has sinned in that thing. And he shall bring his trespass offering to the Lord for his sin, which he has committed, a female from the flock, a lamb or a kid of the goats as a sin offering. So the priest shall make atonement for him concerning his sin. If he's not able to bring a lamb, then he shall bring to the Lord for his trespass, which he has committed, two turtle doves or two young pigeons. One is a sin offering and the other as a burnt offering. And he shall bring them to the priest who shall offer that which is for the sin offering first and wring off its head from its neck. That would be hard for me. But shall not divide it completely. Then he shall sprinkle some of the blood of the sin offering on the side of the altar, and the rest of the blood shall be drained out at the base of the altar. It is a sin offering. And he shall offer the second bird as a burnt offering according to the prescribed manner. So the priest shall make atonement on his behalf for his sin, which he has committed, and it shall be forgiven him. But if he's not able to bring two turtle doves or two young pigeons, then he who sinned shall bring for his offering one-tenth of an epath of fine flour, as a sin offering. He shall put no oil on it, nor shall he put frankincense on it, for it is a sin offering. Then he shall bring it to the priest, and the priest shall take his handful of it as a memorial portion and burn it on the altar according to the offerings made by fire to the Lord. It is a sin offering. The priest shall make atonement for him for his sin that he has committed in any of these matters, and it shall be forgiven him. The rest shall be the priests as a grain offering, just a handful for the sin offering. Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, If a person commits a trespass and sins unintentionally in regard to the holy things of the Lord, then he shall bring to the Lord as his trespass offering a ram without blemish from the flocks, with your valuation in shekels of silver, according to the shekel of the sanctuary, as a trespass offering. And he shall make restitution for the harm that he has done in regard to the holy thing, and shall add one-fifth to it and give it to the priest. So the priest shall make atonement for him with the ram 
of the trespass offering, and it shall be forgiven him. If a person sins and commits any of these things which are forbidden to be done by the commandment of the Lord, though he does not know it, yet he is guilty and shall bear his iniquity, and he shall bring to the priest a ram without blemish from the flock, with your evaluation as a trespass offering. So the priest shall make atonement for him regarding his ignorance in which he erred and did not know it, and it shall be forgiven him. If a trespass offering, oh, no, it is a trespass offering. He has certainly trespassed against the Lord. Wow. Wow. That's a lot to take in, isn't it? All right, we move right along, and we have begun the second gospel in the New Testament, the gospel of Mark, and we are reading today from chapter 2, Picking up with verse 13, Mark 2, 13. Then he went out again by the sea. We're talking about Jesus. And all the multitude came to him, and he taught them. As he passed by, he saw Levi, the son of Ephesus, sitting at the tax office. And he said to him, Follow me. So he arose and followed him. Now it happened as he was dining in Levi's house that many tax collectors and sinners also sat together with Jesus and his disciples, for there were many, and they followed him. And when the scribes and the Pharisees saw him eating with the tax collectors and the sinners, they said to his disciples, How is it that he eats and drinks with tax collectors and sinners? And when Jesus heard it, he said to them, Those who are well have no need of a physician but those who are sick. I did not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. The disciples of John and of the Pharisees were fasting. Then they came and said to him, Why do the disciples of John and of the Pharisees fast? But your disciples do not fast. And Jesus said to them, Can the friends of the bridegroom fast while the bridegroom is with them? As long as they have the bridegroom with them, they cannot fast. But the days will come when the bridegroom will be taken away from them, and then they will fast in those days. No one sews a piece of unshrunk cloth on an old garment, or else the new piece pulls away from the old, and the tear is made worse. And no one puts new wine into old wineskins, or else the new wine bursts the wineskins. The wine is spilled, and the wineskins are ruined. But new wine must be put into new wineskins. And that's why we need to be born again, right? Because being born again, we are a new wineskin, which new wine, the oil, the word, the Holy Ghost can come into. Now it happened that he went through the grain fields on the Shabbat, and as they went, his disciples began to pluck the heads of grain. 
And the Pharisees said to him, notice they're trucking along with him. And the Pharisees said to him, look, why do they do what is not lawful on the Shabbat? But he said to them, have you never read what David did when he was in need and hungry? He and those with him, how he went into the house of God in the days of Abiathar the high priest and ate the showbread, which is not lawful to eat except for the priests, and also gave some to those who were with him. And he said to them, the Sabbath, the Shabbat, was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. Therefore, the Son of Man is also Lord of the Shabbat. Woo! Tell me about it. Don't you think that stirred them up ugly and angry for him to declare that? Okay. Chapter 3 of Mark. And he entered the synagogue again, and a man was there who had a withered hand. So they watched him closely whether he would heal him on the Shabbat so that they might accuse him. And he said to the man who had the withered hand, step forward. And then he said to them, is it lawful on the Shabbat to do good or to do evil, to save life or to kill? But they kept silent. And when he had looked around at them with anger, being grieved by the hardness of their hearts, he said to the man, stretch out your hand. And he stretched it out. And his hand was restored as whole as the other. Then the Pharisees went out and immediately plotted with the Herodians against him how they might destroy him. Boy, now hatred is really kindled, isn't it? Hatred, anger. Now they're going to get into terrible plots. Hmm. Rings a bell for today, doesn't it? All right, we move right along to Psalm 36. This is a psalm of David, the servant of the Lord, and he gave it to the chief musician who put it to music. And here we go, Psalm 36. An oracle within my heart concerning the transgression of the wicked. There is no fear of God before his eyes, for he flatters himself in his own eyes. When he finds out his iniquity and when he hates, the words of his mouth are wickedness and deceit. He has ceased to be wise and to do good. He devises wickedness on his bed. He sets himself in a way that is not good. He does not abhor evil. Your mercy, O Lord, is in the heavens. Your faithfulness reaches to the clouds. Your righteousness is like the great mountains. Your judgments are a great deep. O Lord, you preserve man and beast. How precious is your loving kindness, O Lord. Therefore, the children of men put their trust under the shadow of your wings. They are abundantly satisfied with the fullness of your house. And you give them drink 
from the river of your pleasures. For with you is the fountain of life. In your light, we see light. Oh, that's a glorious statement there. In your light, we see light. Oh, continue your loving kindness to those who know you and your righteousness to the upright in heart. Let not the foot of pride come against me and let not the hand of the wicked drive me away. There the workers of iniquity have fallen. They have been cast down and are not able to rise. The final casting down, not able to rise. Woo! That's a powerful, powerful psalm. All right, we wrap up this beautiful February 17th with Proverbs 10, verses 1 and 2. Proverbs chapter 10, 1 and 2. And this begins the Proverbs of Solomon. The Proverbs of Solomon, David's son. A wise son makes a glad father, but a foolish son is the grief of his mother. And I'm a thinking Solomon is speaking out of family experience here. Treasures of wickedness profit nothing. You can't even call them treasures, really, can you? Treasures of wickedness profit nothing, but righteousness delivers from death. That is very powerful. Righteousness delivers from death. And you know, there again, like the unintentional sin, I think sometimes we are delivered from, de from death. And we don't even know it. Maybe we took that right hand turn and we're not even sure why we did. And maybe it averted some kind of tragedy. All kinds of examples we could think of. Isn't the Lord good? He takes care of us minute by minute, day by day. And so, Abba Father, we come as a group before you. And we thank you and we bless you for this powerful word today, unintentional sin, Jesus healing on the Shabbat, and it all worked towards their plotting his death. And he knew that. And this powerful psalm from David, ending with some wisdom from Solomon, what a wonderful time spent, well invested in the feeding of our soul and our spirit, right? And our flesh. There's healing in it. Great healing. Thank you, precious Lord. We hold up Israel to you, Lord, always. We hold up Israel. We hold up Yerushalayim to you, this powerful grand city that you love above all the other cities. It is where you had your son. It is the place where you had your son leave the earth. And it is that special city where he will return and put his foot on the Mount of Olives. Oh, talk about a day. I can hardly take that in. Thank you, Jesus. There you are at the right-hand side of your Father. And you're waiting for his further instructions. And in the meantime, you are interceding for us. Oh, intercede for us, please, please, Jesus. Please, Holy Spirit. Please bring peace. Bring peace to Israel, bring peace to Jerusalem, bring peace to the heart of Bibi Netanyahu and every heart of the Knesset members. 
Father, if possible, bring peace to the hearts of the enemies that they put down the horrible thing they were going to throw to destroy. Let them have that last minute thought that it didn't work. Why am I doing this? Oh, Father God, if there's any way any of those enemies could be brought to you today. Holy Spirit, we delight in thinking that you could arrange that through the bidding of your Father to rush into their lives and bring those occasions, those hateful occasions in their lives and begin to turn their hearts towards their Heavenly Father, towards their Savior, Jesus. Father God, we thank you for that. We hold her up to you. Everything is becoming based out of your holy city. Father, I hold up America to you. And I'd ask on this day, this beginning of a, a new week, that you be with President Trump, Melania, young Baron, as he goes back to school, Mike Pence and Karen, as they return to the service of the USA. <clears throat> Father God, many, many people returning to work. Father, I'd ask that you would be with the United States of America and that hatred would have cold water from you poured on all of that hot burning hatred, all of those wicked evil plots. Let them all come unraveled, Lord, please. Let them all become exposed by your light, that we would see light in your light, like the scripture spoke to us today. Oh, Father God, give President Trump your words, your ways. Give him, Lord, all that he needs to do the job that you would smile on this day. Thank you, Lord, for giving him such a great weekend, a weekend at the motor race where he seemed so happy, so excited to be there. We bless you for that, Lord. We bless you. We pray that it, it brought relaxation for him and for Melania. And we bless you, Lord, for all the things you are doing. You are taking the biggest mess that ever was created on this earth. And we are watching you. Have your will in your way. Thank you, Lord. It builds us up so much to know that you are handling our lives. You are handling our way. We bring everything to you, Lord. All of the prayers, all of the praises, all of the songs, all of the concerns. We bring them and we lay them we're going to say, at the foot of the altar. We lay them at your feet so that the burden is off of us. You are the burden bearer. You are the problem solver. You are the one who touches us with healing. Lord, I'd ask you would heal and deliver every person today from the bondages they find themselves in, the bondages and the grips of de depression and discouragement, the terrible spirits of lying and hatred, the spirit of unforgiveness and anger, the spirit that needs to come is the Holy Spirit bringing reconciliation bringing a renewed mind, a renewed spirit, bringing the precious forgiveness that you purchased on the cross. We embrace these today, Lord. Help us to tend to these old sins that just linger and nag. Help us to say no more, no more. This is it, this is it today. 
This is it. I, I will place it to be washed under the blood of Jesus. I will place my attitude to be washed under the blood of Jesus. And all of God's children cried a hearty amen. Went about a beautiful day. Make it a beautiful day in him. Praise God. He loves you so much. And so do I. Bye-bye.